Mm-hmm. And then I think one of the things with communities of color is that we tend to want to pretty everything up. Like if it's not pretty, if it's not something pretty, we don't want to have it. Right. And, and what I mean by pretty it up, every time I meet a parent, that's a person of color, my son is high functioning. He has Asperger's and I'll say to them, okay, number one, there's no such thing as high functioning autistic anymore. They're like, yeah. they're like, um, I go, because there's a lot of comorbidities that are associated with autism spectrum disorders. Some mm-hmm. of which may be anxiety, bipolar disorder, um, schizophrenia. And I said, and so by you saying he's high functioning, that means you're probably not addressing his social emotional. He doesn't have any supports because you don't take him to therapy because he's high function functioning. And they're like, uh, uh, yeah, well, you might want to work on that. And then Mm -hmm. for the person that says, oh, my son has Asperger's. I'm like, no, he doesn't. And they're like, yes, he does. And I go, oh, so your son has something that was named after a man that tortured people, disabled people, mm-hmm. and he was a neo-Nazi because Asperger's was a person who who was a neo-Nazi that tortured people. And that's oh, what your son has. Wait, 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 and they go, oh, oh, no, 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 no. He doesn't have that. And I go, no, wait. I'm, you, I just want to be right now because let me tell you, I'm, I'm a special education teacher. They didn't teach us none of that. When we were in school. No, you ain't supposed to know about that. That man tortured people. Girl. He tortured people. Because of their disabilities to see, ooh, let me see what this is going to work. Is wow. this going to work? Let me put his finger in a light socket. Let's see what happens. Though people right. that are just listening, y'all can't see my face. My mouth is open right now. I mean, what? this man had no value on the disabled community's lives. The value was just collecting data on their torture. So that's not something that, you know, when people say that, you get, you got to know. You don't know what you don't know, right? Mm-hmm. But I also feel like people feel like being autistic as a word is just a negative and it's not a negative. There are so many people that are neurodivergent and autistic, right? And it's only a positive when someone like Elon Musk says, Oh, I'm autistic. But the reality of it is, is that there's a lot of black and Brown people that are autistic that are just like that, that are thriving. Now I call them the mask population because they don't, represent some of the autistic characteristics that we think are the autistic norms, but they are autistic nonetheless. And so we, we tend to lose sight of that. And that's why I say, you know, that particular population, they're left behind. They need your pity. What they need is your empathy and your support. Yes. So I say greater needs. So instantly, you know, you need to help that person along a little bit more. Mm-hmm. You know, you might need to tie his shoe. Uh, in the case of my son, he's going to come up to you like Captain Morgan and go, ho, oh, put that foot up. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're supposed to know. Like, tie this. <laughs> I mean, that's just how my son gets down. He's like, ain't no shame in this game. I don't know how to tie my shoe. Can you do it? And I've yeah. seen him walk up to, it's funny, I've seen him walk up to big, burly people, burly men, be like, mm-hmm. and they'll do it. Because yeah. Girl, this woman <laughs> over here talking about Manny. And so one of the things is that my son, he speaks other languages. He speaks like a few languages, but he just didn't. He doesn't care that much for English. So his preferred language really is Spanish and Spanish. Oh, wow. He's fluent and he, there is no, what did you say? Huh? Huh? What? Everybody understands him. Okay. Except for me sometimes. But the thing that's funny is that he was over here talking about Manny. And I was like, "What the hell is me? Like, yeah, and Handy Manny. Manny? Did, of course, it was Handy Manny, <laughs> and it was Mister. Um, I don't know, it was somebody else. And then one time he got us with this Eoji. He said it for like the longest time, Eoji. Mm-hmm. And the teacher was like, "Who is this Eoji?" And I'm like, "Eoji, Eoji, what is that?" And then this went on for like two months. I swear to you. And then one day, my daughter came to me. She said, "That's GI Joe spelled backwards." <laughs> then he would go to class oh and he God. would say stuff like wagon wagon and they were like he keeps saying wagon wagon and i said wagon he wants a wagon and i realized he was saying what's going on in patois oh he's going so I have to, to make it patois <laughs> wagon wagon and then he's i realized like, he was saying, 
Log on. Log on. But it's just like the stuff that he does, it's just beyond my rebel comprehension. Like I had to do, I did this interview a few days ago, actually on Tuesday. And this gentleman wanted, he insisted on, you know, they wanted to have him in the interview. And and unfortunately they put us in front of a window where there was a bunch of cars. So he's not even looking at the man. He's looking out the window. The man says, so Ari, what do you want to be when you grow up? Grow up. This boy said a grown man. (laughs) I'm like, "Mm." that's what he said. That's what he wants to be. I mean, oh my God. What up? Let him live his life. Who cares? I don't care. I've seen him tame the most rugged people. Like, because <laughs> um, we've been in restaurants where he, you know, so, okay, so he's a chicken aficionado. And so one time we were in this restaurant and they didn't bring our food <laughs> fast enough and he went and took this man's chicken leg. Well, I it, it was my fault because I wasn't paying attention. I was on my phone. And I looked and he went up and took, I said, oh, sorry. And when he got up, that's where that man was seven feet tall. He wasn't. But in my mind, sitting on in the chair, he oh was like, God. hey, what did you do it? And all of a sudden, my, my son looked at him and he looked back at my son. He said, it's OK. It's OK, dude. I'm going to get me some more chicken. And I was oh just, oh, Lord, he's about to get killed. But I ordered the man some more food. But the point yeah. is, is that I noticed that sometimes people will fool you, mm-hmm. right? But we just have to really, um, as parents, as advocates, and as a community of people, we have to keep informing um, people about what our needs are. And I think what our needs are in these inner city schools, we need to have more supports. They need to have better funding so that they can support our children. Right? Hola, comadres. I would like to formally extend an invitation to our first Comadre Happy Hour of 2023, which will take place on Friday, January 6th from 5 to 8 p.m. at Sujo Gastro Fusion in the Bronx. Good news, there is parking available. Make sure to click the Eventbrite link in the show notes to secure your ticket. Hope to see you all there. Bye.